Hey there, Canada Welders. This is Nick coming at you from our office in Vaughan, Ontario today. Today is going to be port part four on our video series on the TIG ACDC 201 Pulse D. So today we're finally at the last section and we're going to be doing some pulse welding with this. So I've spent most of my morning playing with some of this thin stuff here. I had some thick stuff. The pulse is really designed more for running with the thin stuff. That's where you really get the benefit of it. But I did find, because I'm not that experienced with the pulse welding, I had an easier time setting it up and figuring out my parameters on something thick and then just slowly backing everything down so I could get something to work on the thin. I tried to jump right into the thin and I found it was confusing me a little bit. So I set it up with this, uh, what do we got? Eighth of an inch thick plate here. And then I moved down to this thin stuff. I'm not even sure what this is, maybe 20 gauge. I'm not positive, but it's thin, thin, you can see. So we're gonna do some welding with it today. Uh, in the past videos, we've been able to film the welding for you guys. I'm not 100% positive that we're gonna be able to film the actual welding because with the pulse, the light is going on and off, on and off, on and off. Uh, and I'm not sure if our camera is gonna be able to keep up with it, but we're gonna try and we're gonna hope for the best and hopefully it works out well. A few things about pulse before I get started. So pulse welding, like I said, is best for joining two thin pieces of steel or aluminum together. And typically when you're TIG welding, right? Say you have this set to whatever amperage and you're welding along. While you're welding, you are continuously not just putting heat into your puddle, but that heat is leaking out into this thin material and it's gonna make it distort, it's gonna make it bend. Sometimes depending on what you're working with, it's gonna make it discolor. And sometimes if you're coming along like this, by the time you get to the end, you know, and you're slowly making your way to the end of your weld, you have, the heat's got no more place to go. You've chased it all the way to the end and now you're superheating this metal here. And if you're not paying attention and you're not using a foot pedal so you can slowly back it off and watch what the metal's doing, you can end up burning a giant hole down here. What was the perfect amperage here is gonna be way too much for down here. That's something that can be tricky to do when you're learning how to TIG weld, right? Maybe you don't have the most experience in the world and you find that you're always blowing out a big section at the end and then you gotta sit there and try to fill it up and that's it's just never good. It's not as, as right as it's supposed to be. The good part about the pulse is that you can set the high and the low on the machine. So say, just for theory, the high I want is 50 amps to weld on this. I can turn the low all the way down to zero. I can turn it to five. I can turn it up to 49 and have it just dip like this. But, and then I can also adjust the frequency of the pulse. So I can set this thing to pulse so fast that it just sounds different. I can't even really see a difference. Or I can turn that frequency down so much that I can literally watch it go from 50 amps to zero amps, 50 amps to zero amps. And what that does is that's continually giving a brief second for that metal to cool off in between so that I can weld this really thin material without causing discoloration and without causing distortion, which is pretty awesome if you're doing like auto body stuff or you're doing any kind of fine work where you're working with thin material, it can make it easier to manage because what you're constantly doing is giving that metal a break and you kind of get to decide by setting the frequency of that pulse how long a break it's gonna get in between. And when you're on the high end of that break, so say I'm going from 50 to five amps, 50 to five amps, 50 to five. When I'm at the 50 for that second, that's when I do my dab. Then I move forward on the five. Then I dab on the 50, forward on the five. Dab like that, back and forth, back and forth. It takes a little bit of getting used to, um, and I'm not the best pulse welder in the world. I can do it though, so we're gonna do it today. But I've definitely seen guys that do it all day long, every day. Uh, guys that do art with it, all that kind of stuff, customers we've had. And man, when you get really good at it, you can lay beautiful beads that are very, very, very consistent on really thin gauge material. And again, you're not gonna bend it all to hell or discolor it. So without further ado, I'm gonna run a bead for you guys with it turned up on this quarter inch thick stuff. And I'm gonna have it turned down really low so that hopefully you guys can see the pulsing. And then I'm gonna try my hand at doing a butt joint with this really thin stuff and we're just gonna see how it goes and see if I know my settings well enough. Okay, so stay tuned. We're gonna to get to the interesting stuff now. Okay, so today we're using a foot pedal 
I got my hot start on. We have our pulse turned on. We got two step because we're using the foot pedal. I'm in DC because we're using steel. My stick welding options are off. Let's start at the beginning. I got 0 0.4 seconds of pre-flow, zero upslope, 200 amps on my pedal. So if I have my pedal maxed out fully, I'm going to get 200 amps, but otherwise the baseline's 15. This here, this button here is my low end. So whatever I'm pressing on my pedal is going to be the high end of my pulse. And when it goes into the low end where it pulses down, that's going to be at 65 amps. I can turn that all the way to zero, but I'm welding some pretty thick stuff. And if you go all the way to zero, you've got to really go hard on the pedal. Got zero on down slope, three seconds post flow of gas, percentage at 25, and our hertz are at 0 0.5. I have the hertz turned right down to 0 0.5 because I'm going to do the slowest pulse the machine can do, just so you guys can see it going on and off. And we're going to see if our camera can catch it. If it can, we're going to turn up the hertz, probably rebalance things a bit, adjust our low end, and then we're going to weld that really thin stuff. Okay, so now that we got the machine set, I'm going to do just a straight flat bead on this because I'm not trying to really show off the weld. Like I mentioned before, I turned the hertz way down and I want to show you how slow this is going to be pulsing and how, how slow you can set it basically. And visually, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Hopefully the camera's gonna catch it. We haven't tested it yet, but let's see. If we get some good footage with that, I'm gonna turn the Hertz up or maybe down, I don't know. And we're gonna weld with some of this thin stuff and see exactly where the pulse welding is really supposed to be shining. But right now, I just wanna be able to show you guys how it's welding, giving a break, welding, giving a break, so you can mentally picture it. Okay, I'm gonna drop my hood and we'll see how this goes. Hopefully we have it set right. Okay, so we got our thin stuff here now. Now that we know that we can film uh, these pulse welds, hopefully it turned out good. I got the thin stuff here. I did a little practice weld on it. I don't love how it's looking because I'm not the most practiced pulse TIG welder. I do overhead stick welding for a living. So this is a little outside of my wheelhouse. But I just went ahead and I changed the Hertz and I changed my low end amperage all the way down to five. So we're gonna try it again and see if it comes out better. Let's hope it does, because I only got, well, I got lots of steel to get it right. So we'll get it right, but let's try this again. Okay, so we just did the thin stuff. Came out pretty good. I haven't wire brushed it or anything like that. Here we have a really flat bead profile. And then I guess I must have picked up along here because I have a bit more 
of the, the ripple that I'm used to seeing into it. Um, very minimal distortion, minimal discoloration. All in all, the pulse did its job. It did what it was supposed to do. Uh, I think if I spent more time playing with it though, I could get a better result. Uh, if any of you guys out there are using this machine and you're doing a lot of pulse welding with it, please drop me, drop me all of your tips. Drop me all of your tips. I mean, I use all the candle weld products, but this particular feature on this particular machine, I don't use it all the time. So if you've got some clever tips about how that you would set up for this, I'd love to hear it and then I'll redo it again using your setup on the video and I'll give you a shout out for it if you, uh, if you got anything to say. But all in all, that wraps up the uh, four part video series on the TIG ACDC 201 Pulse D. We did AC welding, we did DC welding, we did stick welding, and today we did our pulse welding on some thick and some thin stuff. And I gotta say, I love this machine. It's awesome. So, if you guys are enjoying the channel, you're enjoying the content, make sure you give me a like, that'd be really great. And if you really dig it, hit that subscribe button. I could use some more subscribers. And I think next week we're gonna start off with some troubleshooting videos and we're gonna talk about some welding techniques. We're gonna take a break from talking about machines and we're more just gonna talk about basic welding stuff, which uh, should be pretty cool. We'll just try to switch it up and we're gonna go back and forth like that. So uh, yeah, don't forget that you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And until I catch you guys next week, stay safe out there. Keep making lots of money. Thanks for watching.